What's going on, everybody? It is April 19th. Some may call that Christmas Eve. Uh, we've got a Thursday <laughs> slate that is uh, pretty tiny. Only five games tonight. So, uh, one, you'll get saved from a lengthy video. And two, we'll be able to dig in a little bit deeper if anything uh, pops off as something nice. Last night did not go as well as I would have liked it to. Um, the the Diamondback stack wasn't necessarily the best, and the Dodgers went sort of insane. But I'm happy with Robbie Ray's performance, and that's all that really matters in this situation. Um, joining me, as always, my co-host, Jake Hardy. Jake, what's going on? Yeah, same same here. Uh, the, the pitching was fine. Uh, Cole and Ray were both fine. You know, they didn't go off or anything, but 25 and 22 DraftKings points. The bats weren't there for me either. Um, so hoping to do a little bit better with the bats. It seems like I can't get both the bats and the pitching together in one day. And, you know, that's, that's hard to do. It's MLB DFS, but pitching has been good over the last week or so. Um, just would like to, to hit on a couple stacks here and there. Exactly. On, especially on this Christmas Eve slate. <laughs> And if you want to hear anything, um, if you want to hear a genius speak, uh, tune into that live stream from yesterday where I told everyone that Ryan Zimmerman was my favorite play on FanDuel. <gasps> Dong yeah. donger. Yeah, that, that happened. There we go. I don't have a, a profitable day overall, but um, I'm certainly going to uh, talk about when I said something smart. So, what's the best he I can do? Zimmerman on DraftKings outscored my... Um, all eight of my hitters <laughs> by himself. So I think they had 41 together. He had 42. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. You should have so. just rastered him and not the other seven guys. You would have a ton well, of money left over. Yeah. I couldn't get up to him. I, I could only get up to Valbuena because I had some, some Houston bats with the two big dogs uh, for pitchers. Yeah. But his FanDuel price was insane. $2,500 yesterday. Yeah, against the lefty, right? It was Steven Matz. Yeah, so. he was, what, 4,000 on DK, I think? Yeah. Yeah, it was, just, it was a no-brainer fan duel play. I didn't, obviously, that I didn't expect that, but boy, am I going to talk about it. <laughs> you should. Yeah. Yeah, we got to talk about when we're right. We talk about when we're wrong, too. Well, I'd like to not never talk about when I'm wrong. That's that's just better. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll cry about that on my own when my, uh, when my account balance is lower than it was from the night before. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Five games. Nothing too fun. Phillies and Pirates starting it off. Phillies set, or yeah, seven. 3.7 run implied total. Pirates, 3.6. It's a 51% chance to win for the Phillies. Um, Jake Arrieta going for Philadelphia. Jamison Tyon going for Pittsburgh. Um, you know, it's a really good pitching matchup. Uh, you know, implied totals are both under four, which is very low. Both guys are good. Uh, if I were leaning towards anyone here on FanDuel, I'd probably lean more towards Arietta, uh, and I'd probably feel the same way on DK. Uh, I have a feeling you're going to go the other way, though. Uh, like, I... All right, so the, the, the total is good, like you said, but I think that has more to do with the weather. Um really than anything so it's okay. 43 degrees at game time and wind blowing in from left um like i have respect for tyon i don't want to full stack against him or anything uh but he's 11,100 on DraftKings, and this guy has a 6.4 and 4.3 swinging strike rate over his last two starts he's in the bottom half in mlb and whiffs per swing um so for 11 one i don't think that's really a guy i'm looking to roster those are just some of the things I look at. Like, I want huge K upside for 11-1. And I think there's, well, there's definitely one guy that, that I love below him. So I don't think I'm going to get hit, get to tie on on this slate. Okay. Arietta is near the bottom in Wisp for swing. Also, he's only made two starts. Um, he may just not be right. I, I'll have to check his velocity and stuff after the show. Um, but I, I don't think I'm going to be playing him despite what... Vegas is showing here with two run totals below four. So I'm gonna pull up Arietta right now since I have it here. Yeah, I, I could get to him too. Fastball velocity so far this year. 
down four tenths of a mile okay. per hour. So nothing crazy. That's so where I was expecting. Velocity to be. fine. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it, it might be something to do with the movement on his pitches still. Um, on his breaking ball, I don't know. Yeah. Um, he had a really, really nasty slider. I, th- I think it was like slider curve um, a couple years ago when he was with the Cubs. I used to love watching him pitch. Uh, he was in he, the zone there. Yeah, for a bit. like he he was getting all the the uh, accusations that he was on roids and stuff. And I hope he if was. You watch it makes him, the product better. Honestly, it's baseball. Um, it's not it, MMA where someone's gonna take steroids and then punch somebody in the face like. I mean, they might throw it. Have a more fun game to watch. Oh no! Well, the the crazy dudes already that do it without steroids that throw a ninety-five mile an hour fastball to people's heads. Right. Yeah, I'm very much pro steroids in baseball. I mean, if they're willing to do it to their bodies, yeah, it's you know, it's better than all of like the amphetamines and coke that everybody was doing in the seventies. Yeah. (laughs) Just to stay awake. I mean, if I'm traveling, uh, like, in a very comfortable plane from city to city, well, not even city to city since you're playing, like, you know, three games at a time, um, you know, I'm, not, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, it's, it's really easy to stay healthy nowadays if you're uh, a baseball player. So get, yeah. get on the gas. It's way more fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's my rant. That's my pro steroids rant. <laughs> yeah, let's bring back the, uh, the Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire days. Where guys are bombing it seventy homers. Awesome! I still remember where I was when McGuire hit that home run. I can yeah. picture it clear as day. I can tell you where all the furniture was in my parents' living room. <laughs> I was I was really young, but I remember that was when I first started watching baseball because I was a, a Cubs fan. So Sammy Sosa was like my my first favorite player ever. Gotcha. Um, so that's what I remember, and I just thought that was normal guys hitting the 65, 70 home runs. So when you picture Sammy Sosa, you picture him looking like he did when he was hitting those home runs and not now as whatever he is. He, he's, yeah, I, I think it's a skin disorder. He's got something going on, or he's bleaching his skin. Um, yeah, really weird what's going on with him. This took a really weird turn, actually. Yeah, anyway, uh, back to the Phillies Pirates. <laughs> um, I like Arietta a lot, particularly on DK. Uh to get him at a price that much lower than Tylon in a game where they're actually the favorites. Like, I know the win isn't as important on DK, but um, I can't imagine paying, what, however many, 24, 30, 3500 dollars more to not be on Arietta in this game. Like, there's not, there's certainly not that big of a gap between those two. And... I mean, you can make some sort of arguments that, like, there's not a gap at all. There is, but, like, I would listen to it. I would much rather have Arietta on DK, and I would definitely rather have him on FanDuel. Yeah, I I think Tyon's a pretty easy fade for me on on DraftKings. Um, Just just not going to pay 11-1. I think there there are quite a few bats that I want to pay up for. Um, So I won't get to Tyon tonight. But I think he'll be pretty low owned. He's got a decent chance, I think, to be the. I mean, if Cranky bombs, I think he's probably my next guy in in raw points, just because pitching's that bad and there's only ten options. Yeah. So like, I get it if you if you want to do that and just hope that Cranky kind of bombs, but I won't be doing it. Sure. Uh, hitting wise, I'm a little bummed that Carlos Santana didn't play yesterday. He looked uh, real tasty. Um, I don't really want to grab any hitters in this game. It's with these run totals and with the weather, like you were just talking yeah. about. Uh, I feel like that's a grabbing anything here is not the best play in the world. I think that uh, some Pittsburgh bats make a little bit of sense. Okay. Like I, I think you can play one offs on the Phillies. Like I think you can play Reese Hoskins or Carlos Santana, our boy. I'd, I'd be uh, fine with Santana. Yeah. Um, but I don't really want to stack against Tyon. Like I said, I, I do have respect for him. The Phillies or the uh, the Pirates bats make a little bit of sense at the top of the order because Arietta's uh, always been bad at preventing steals. And you've got Adam Frazier and Gregory Polanco and Starlin Marte, three guys with speed right at the top. So a little bit of a mini stack, you could get guys um, running on Arietta. So I don't think they're going to be hitting home runs. Because of the weather and the wind blowing in, but I think that a little bit of a Pittsburgh stack here is something I'm interested in. 
Yeah, prices are a little bit better on DK. I could see doing something like Frazier, Marte, Bell if you need if you wanted a three person group. I don't love Polanco's price. Um, yeah. But you know you can go to four if you needed to. But there are better options throughout the day than than stacking up this game. I think. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I'm I'm expecting to see a little bit of Arietta for me and almost no Tyon. Braves and Mets. Uh, Braves, 4.4 run implied total. Mets, 4.4 run implied total. There's not really like a line out on this game. Um, only one or two sports books have it. It seems like it's the same sports books that copy each other's stuff. So this could <laughs> blow up big time here. Um, we shall see. Uh, it's a 50-50 game as of right now based on the line. Uh, Luke Sims going for Atlanta, the youngster. And then uh, Matt Harvey... Uh, on the hill for the Mets. So Sims is in play here. Um, you know, he's a Braves prospect, young guy, uh, been there for years and years at this point. We talked about it before the show. Uh, drafted in 2012, I believe. Uh, he's 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,000 on DK. Uh, if that line is anywhere even remotely close to, you know, Braves being a favorite, um, he's a, like, it's a shame he's not this sort of pay down option on a big slate where you can fill it with more expensive bats. He might be in a situation where he's so cheap that he's not even relevant. Yeah, you may not need him today. And I haven't, I usually play around with lineups more after the show. Yeah. But I, like just eyeballing it, there are a few expensive bats I want to pay up for, but I don't really want to pay up for all of them because, like, Freddie Freeman and. Um, the Arizona guys, uh, I even like the Angels guys, they're all going to be popular in their own right. So like, I don't want to pay up for every single bat. So if you're comfortable playing Sims and leaving some salary on the table, I think that that's definitely an option here. He, um, I mean, if you look at like his game logs last year, just like his swing strike stuff, it's not very appealing. He's got games with 5.3, 6.3. Um, I'd like to see him somewhere in the, the 10 neighborhood. And he had a few starts near 10 and above 10. But um, like I don't think he's got great stuff. But for 4K in a game where I think his team could put up a bunch of runs, you really need him to throw four or five innings and just limit damage and maybe get you a win. It's not that important on DraftKings. But if he gives you double-digit points here, which I think he can, then I like him for 4K. Uh, I'm with you there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, Freddie Freeman left the game yesterday, got hit on yeah. the wrist, same wrist that he got hit on or that he broke last year or maybe yeah. two years ago. So uh, who knows if he's actually playing or not today. Just something to keep in mind. He's in the projected lineups right now. I think he looks good if he's in the lineup, but you know he might have uh, a little bit of a shortage of power just in case. I would be surprised if he played today honestly just if i'm giving my personal opinion uh, yeah. as a braves fan doesn't seem like it's just not the scenario where you need to run him out if he's at like 80 percent so it's right the middle and of april it, it's always tough targeting guys with hand and and wrist injuries you, like you said you're just gonna lose some power there and i don't want to roster guys roster home run hitters that don't have all their power so yeah do that's a good a, catch by you do you have the temperature for the braves yeah, it's good weather, 60 degrees, okay. uh, a little bit of wind blowing out. So I was going to say, if it's like 38 or something, uh, I really don't want the guy with the sore wrist to be playing baseball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's bad enough just playing in the cold. but Oh, yeah. Uh, if he chops one out and uh, he feels that vibration through his whole body, I mean, he might jump off the top of the stadium. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I like Sims... He's not a guy that I'll probably end up with more than a couple like flyer lineups on FanDuel uh, just because there are better options for guys that can pick up wins, and I'm not even sure that I'd be able to spend enough salary to do it. Uh, but on DK as a second pitcher at 4,000, I, I like I like it a lot. He's good. He should be good. You know, former first round draft pick for them uh, has worked his way throughout the the system. Um, over the past six years, so I'm anxious to see him, you know, be up and be up more than, you know, he was last year. 
I'd, I'd like to see him as you know a future mainstay of the rotation. So I'm interested, but yeah, he you know anything could happen in this start for him. Right, and that, that's what I was gonna, that's where I was going to go. So you got this 4K pitcher. If it's confirmed, he's going to start, and he's going to throw whatever 80, 90 pitches or whatever pitch count they give him. Now you you have to think about what his ownership's going to be. If he's going to be 35, you know, something like that in tournaments, 35% owned. I'm saying, um, and we've seen it with these super cheap guys where they become chalk. And you know, he, I don't like I said, I don't think he's some pitcher you can't target against. So then you got to look at at least a leverage stack for the Mets here. I like it the just Mets sort a lot of in of, general. <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of scary bats, really. Yeah. Against righties, like Cespedes can hit righties. And then you start off with Conforto, as Drupal Cabrera, and then Jay Bruce batting cleanup. That's not a fun um, group of guys to go up against to no, start the game. Not at all. So those would be the guys that I'm really targeting. Um, I don't really want to play Todd Frazier against a righty. So it's really those four, and then maybe Adrian Gonzalez if if you can stomach it. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I, I, would, I would rather have, like, I think it's more likely that the Mets bats have a good day than, than Luke Sims does. Oh, uh, for sure. But he does yeah. have, you know, a ton of upside at that price and a little bit of electricity in his arm, which yeah. is kind of exciting. But, yeah, I'd be more likely to have a, a Conforto... Cabrera, Jay Bruce, Cespedes stack um, than wanting to have a ton of Luke Sims. Yeah, and so how I'm going to build my lineup tonight probably is putting Granky, put in all the bats that I want, and then whoever I can afford really for my, my starting pitch too. So if Sims is on my lineup, then he's on my lineup and hope to get 10 points out of him, but it's not like I'm super pumped to play Luke Sims even at 4,000. Uh, At least yeah, not right now. I agree. And I, I'm not going to be going to any Braves bats, uh, especially because I'm not expecting Freeman to be in the lineup. I don't think anything really grades out all that well after that. It's a game to keep an eye on. Keep an eye on the, the, the line. Uh, keep an eye <laughs> on you know any potential weather in that game. Um, if it is going to be in the 60s, that's a little bit better for Freeman. But ultimately, I, I don't really see the Braves as a viable spot tonight. Yeah, I think it would just be Ozzy Albies as a one-off if Freeman's not in the lineup. Yeah, he looks um, good on DK. Yeah, yeah, Freeman or uh, Albies for for forty-three hundred. Um, you don't have an interest in Matt Hardy, right? No, not at all. It, neither do I. Uh, I. I think he he might get ownership here too, but especially if Freeman's out of the lineup, then he becomes a little more interesting, but. I think he's going to get some ownership, and I'm I'm not about that. On Fanduel, yeah. relative to his price, he might be my least favorite pitcher of the day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was I was talking on DraftKings because he's 6,300. If you get a weaker lineup, um, he'll definitely get ownership, and I don't I don't want any part of that. I'd rather I'd probably rather just pay nine hundred dollars less and take Tropiano. Mm -hmm. Me too. In a in a way worse matchup. Yeah. All right, I think that's enough on that game. Now we can get into some lineups that uh, are going to be nice stacks. Yeah. Brewers and Marlins. Brewers, five-run implied total. Marlins, 3.8. 63% chance to win for the Brewers. Uh, Chase Anderson on the hill for Milwaukee. Dylan Peters going for the Marlins. Um, no interest in Peters. He's just an immediate cross-off. I expected Chase Anderson to grade out better on FanDuel. Um but he's just sort of in the same range as everybody else for me. So I like him. I, obviously, the game situation is is perfect on FanDuel. He looks fine there. Uh, I just There's nobody that I'm really doing backflips for in that top half of the uh, salaried pitchers. Where are you at for Anderson? Anderson, yeah, the, re the results have been okay. Six innings pitched in three out of four starts. Um I don't really believe in the underlying stuff. Like he's got a 20% K rate, which is fine. Uh, but but for 9,500, I just can't get to him when I can pay for $1,100 more for Granky. Yeah. <clears throat> so he had a big second half, but I I don't really see what or a second half of 2017. But I don't really see 
that same Chase Anderson, really. He's not missing bats at the rate I'd want to see. And this Marlins team, we talk about it like every day, but uh, they've just been tough against these really good pitchers. And I don't know why. Like, I don't think they should be tough if you just go down their lineup and look up each of these individual guys' numbers. But um, hoping they can do that one more time. And I think Chase Anderson will be owned on both sites, right? Um, man, I don't know. Like, to me on DK, I can't imagine grabbing him. I would just either rather have more Grinky or spend 2000 less and take Arietta. <clears throat> like, he's in yeah. this weird middle ground where I don't see enough appeal for grabbing him when you can take a full step forward or a giant step back. Right, that that's sort of where I'm at. Like, I just think he's okay. Um, if you were like eighty-eight hundred on DK, I think that would be like a, a more appealing price. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I I'm clearly torn on what to do with him. I don't think I want to play him, uh, but I just don't know why the Marlins have been tough against these pitchers, like the like Syndergaard and Degrom and. Some other guys too. Just, yeah. I'll have like probably you know an average amount of Anderson if I had to guess right now. Okay, uh, that's fair. Now, what I won't have an average amount of would be Brewers bats. I assume that I'm going to be significantly heavy on them. Uh, everybody looks great to me. Uh, I can't get enough of anything one to six, but you know more one to five than anything else. Uh, Lorenzo Cain looks really nice at the top of the order. 3,200 on FanDuel, 4,000 on DK. It's a little bit higher on DK, but Domingo Santana, 2,700 on FanDuel, 3,000 on DK. One of my favorite plays of the day. Might end up being a spotlight hitter for me. Uh, we'll see when that goes. Ryan Braun, 3,100 against the lefty. Like, I just, I can't get enough of the Brewers tonight. Five-run implied that, total, which is highest of the slate. Like, everything's coming up. Aces. <clears throat> that's where I'm at, too. Um, Peters, this guy has been pretty awful this year. He can't miss a bat. And last year he was good at limiting hard contact. He was, like, 25% against righties last year, which is really, really good for a lefty. And this year he's up to 38.5. Obviously a, a small sample. But even if you look at his average exit velocity, he is 7th among starting pitchers in average exit velocity, um, near 94 miles per hour. And now he gets, what, seven, eight, maybe all righties. Yeah. And all righties with power. Um, Ryan Braun, he's got a calf injury. But if he's in the lineup, he's probably my favorite player of the entire slate. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't see myself leaving him off. A lineup if if he's starting of course and then right behind him is jesus aguilar he's got five batted balls versus lefties this year is averaging over 101 miles per hour exit velocity mm -hmm. uh, i'm in i'm in for the yeah he, he's got like a 30 some percent strike rate or uh strikeout rate but he when he hits the ball he just crushes it especially against lefties lorenzo kane crushes lefties um domingo santana you mentioned him he's also one of my favorite plays uh, Hernan Perez can hit lefties really well. And, like, all of these righties, and then you can play Travis Shaw, too. He hits lefties okay. And probably going to see a righty at some point here from the bullpen, assuming Peters gets knocked out. Uh, yeah, I'd, I just I love it all. Uh, I can't get enough here. Um, they're going to be popular, for sure, particularly on FanDuel, where their pricing is, is very muted. Um, they'll make for a nice, like, four-man stack with Grinky, I would imagine, and you can get there real easy. My only concern, I don't even want to say concern, I just hate having to most likely have all three outfielders. Yeah. But I can't, you know, that's, it's not going to stop me. I'm, it's gonna, right. There's going to be a lot of Keen, Santana, Braun portions of stacks uh, in my lineup. So love the Brewers. I ran it a little bit earlier. Uh, they came up in an overwhelming amount of lines and I can't imagine going a different direction. Yeah, I'll definitely be having some Brewers in my lineup. Just too good of a spot. I think 
if Braun's out, Aguilar becomes my favorite bat of this game and, and one of my favorite bats of the slate. So that's my hot take for the day. Justin Bauer looks great on DK yeah. as a one-off bat. It's only 3,000. Yeah. Sure. And if Anderson's going to be chalky, that's good leverage, too. You get some lefty power against Chase Anderson. That's perfectly fine with me. Yeah, that's just like a – I mean, he's $500 cheaper than he is on FanDuel. That's a really crazy price. Yeah. I wouldn't have expected that. Um, yeah, so I'll have minimal amounts of Anderson and uh, as much Brewers as I could possibly jam in. Mm hmm. Diamondbacks and Giants. D backs 4.8 run implied total. Giants 3.7. 62% uh, chance to win for the Diamondbacks. Zach Greinke on the hill for Arizona. Ty Block going for the Giants. Uh, no block for me. Uh, for Greinke, he's probably my best play. Um, on FanDuel. He just grades out the best. I'm surprised that he's not the most expensive pitcher. This is a perfect matchup. Um, I, I can't get enough of Brinky here. I hope that I have him in half of my stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll have Granky tonight for sure. This is who I'm paying up for at pitcher, and it's not even really paying up that much. 10-6. No. Um, and I just want to keep attacking the Giants. Like, Ray had a, a down performance, quote unquote, last night, but he put up 22 DraftKings points. I think Granky could easily get to that tonight. Um, everything really checks out for Granky. Uh, good run total against him. Um, what a rotation the D backs have, by the way. Yeah. Like they, you go from Corbin to Robbie Ray to Granky and then Godley. Like th th that's got to be maybe the best rotation in MLB. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so, nasty, especially uh, now that uh, Corbin is apparently uh, Jesus on the field. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of it at the time. Yeah, I don't know. They've got something brewing there, apparently. Um, so Granky's pretty much a lock for me tonight. Uh, I, I don't care that he's going to be chalk. I'm just going to take the what I think is going to be the high scoring pitcher and move on and differentiate my lineup elsewhere. Yeah, I'm with you. I'll have a lot of him. He'll be really popular, as he should be, on a five-game slate. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also going to be pairing him with a lot of his teammates because, once again, very fond of a Diamondback stack. Didn't go as well as I would have liked yesterday, particularly my boy Kettle Marte, who uh, ate, ate a bunch of dongs yesterday. Wasn't very good. Um, but I'll be right back to the well again. Still 2,500. He had really high ownership. Uh, in my tournament yesterday on FanDuel, like 25 or 30 percent or something like that. So, either people are really listening to me, or that was just like a normal play. <laughs> but I think I think it was his price, and again, he's got a really good price on DraftKings, dual position eligibility, and you don't really think of him as a power hitter, but against lefties this year in 22 batted ball events, he's got a 94.4 um, average exit velocity. That's miles per hour, of course. Um, you know, Goldschmidt's fine here too for 5K. Pollock's fine for 5K or for 4,700. And then, yeah, I mean, Block is just like a soft tossing lefty, pretty decent at limiting hard contact. So I don't love the stack. Like I, I much prefer the Brewers just because they're they've got um, guys deeper in the lineup that I want to target too. Um, but it'd really be two, three, four for me for Arizona. Yeah, I'll I'll be going. You know, a minimal amount of Peralta, but two, three, four, five. I don't, not that I love Chris Owings, but I just know that he's going to pop mm -hmm. up at twenty five hundred. Uh, Diamondbacks are going to be probably my second most popular stack if I had to guess, and they'll go swimmingly with Grinky. Um, <laughs> it's completely unrelated. Anytime the Blue Jays play, we should give exit velocities in kilometers per hour. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I got. Um, yeah, I love the D backs here. Uh, you know, 4.8 run implied total, second highest on the slate by like a sizable margin right now. Sometimes it's just that simple. You can't really avoid those that potential for extra runs. Um, you know, tie block, 5Ks per nine projected from Steamer, 4.63 FIP. I'm just not really nervous about that. So, you know, Goldschmidt probably has the highest ceiling of anybody of the day 
in that matchup? Yeah, besides Aguilar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kidding, give, me, give me a bundle Kidding. of Goldschmidt, and yeah. I'm, I'm cool with it. Yeah. He should. I mean, this is this is the dream scenario for him, a soft-tossing lefty. Yeah. He, and, I mean, you know, like Ty Block isn't – like I have some respect for him in that he can limit hard contact, but – that doesn't mean he's not going to give up runs here. And I think it's going to come from those guys at 2, 3, 4. I think Owens is fine, but he always goes over-owned for me for how good of a player I actually think he is. Yeah. So I'll probably go elsewhere with him. Okay. But I do like a little bit of a mini stack for D-backs. And then I think we're both going to be on the same page. We're not really looking at any Giants. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just playing Granky and not going to play bats against him. Um, I honestly don't even know who I would recommend. Like, even on a five-game slate, I don't, I don't like really any of these bats. Brandon Belt on FanDuel is only twenty-three hundred projected to hit second. That's a guy that I would look at if I was like forced to pick a giant. Yeah, I guess. Uh, luckily, <clears throat> I'm not forced to pick a giant, so I'm going to pick uh, none of them. Yes, that's where I'm at too. Final game of the slate: Angels and Red Sox. Uh, Basically, the third straight or third of five games that are coin flips. Uh, Four point three run implied total for the Angels. Four point three run implied total for the Red Sox. Fifty fifty. Uh, Nick Trapiano <laughs> going for the Angels. Eduardo Rodriguez going for the Red Sox. Uh, I like both of the pitchers, which is kind of a problem. Not really a direction I like to go when I like both pitchers in a game, and the run total is still above four. Uh, if I had to pick between the two. I think that I would be picking Rodriguez, at least on FanDuel. Actually, yeah, I would pick Rodriguez on FanDuel. I don't mind the price difference. But on DK, uh, Rodriguez, 7,300. Trapiano, 5,400. Uh, give me the cheaper guy. I think that that's where I'm at as well. So Trapiano treated us well in his first start. He went six and two-thirds, I think, six strikeouts. and Looked pretty good just yeah, on paper nice yeah um i don't expect him to do that here i think he's even cheaper than what he was in that first start um the red sox are just a really tough matchup they're a really good team like we said yesterday um tropiano missed all of 2017 just to remind you guys and then he came back looked good in his first start so it's possible that he's just a pretty good pitcher and we just haven't seen him for a while and that's why he's priced down so much um, it's just a really tough matchup. But he is a guy that I think has a decent chance to get you 10 to 12 to maybe 15 points here if he can go five innings and you know strike some guys out, limit, limit the damage a little bit. I think he's capable of that. And if he's going to be significantly lower owned than guys like Luke Sims and uh, Matt Harvey um, and the Arietta, then I mean, I, I'll at least consider him as my SP2. We have some breaking news uh, to touch on right now. Let's we'll, we'll hear it. Uh, the Reds, after their 3-15 and start to the season, have fired manager Brian. Oh, Rice. man. Wow. Seems a bit early, but all right. Going to Jim Riggleman because, you know, that always goes well. Jim Riggleman. Uh, but, yeah, uh, apparently ESPN released that in, uh, let's see, seven minutes ago. So, yeah, if you're a Reds fan listening to this, Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the yeah. Jim Riggleman era. If you're, if you're a Reds fan, you're probably playing a lot of DFS just to watch your team. If you're a Reds fan, you're probably waking up with a hangover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're garbage. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, just stack against your, Yeah. Just stack against your team every every slate if you're a Reds team. If you're a Reds fan, um, it'll give you a reason to watch the game and and root against your team. <laughs> anyway. Um, now that we're now that we got our Brian Price news out of the way, um, I'm not gonna have any bats in this game. But uh, you're gonna tell me you like the top half of the Angels. Yeah, and I, that's it's an ownership thing for Eduardo Rodriguez. I think he's he's good. I liked him last start, but um, he's a guy that can definitely lose his control and start walking guys and give up power, especially to righties. Um, if he gets wild here. He's going to be in big trouble with guys like uh, 
Kinsler, Trout, Upton. Pujols has hit lefties really hard. Anderson Simmons has hit lefties really hard. Just a lot of landmines here for Eduardo Rodriguez. And I actually like a little bit of an Angel stack. So the three guys I mentioned up top, I'm even considering Pujols. Probably won't get to him because I want to play Aguilar or Goldschmidt. Yeah, But he is a guy that, like, if I had a, a crunch like you have, that he would definitely be a guy that I, I keep in there, which I usually don't say every day. Um, <laughs> no, do, you think you Erod, do you think Erod's going to be popular? You normally say, I don't want to play Pujols. <laughs> yeah, I, I and I don't, but today I do. Yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm going to end up getting there. It might be a case, like... In an optimal world, if this was all in a vacuum, I would probably have an angel stack with, like, Eduardo Rodriguez, but that doesn't work the way that it should. But he's the guy that I like at the lower price point to grab the more expensive bats. Um, so, like, if I were going to have the angels, it would probably be on one of those real crazy flyer lineups that I would do with uh, Luke Sims. My guess okay. is that I have a very minimal amount of angels. Uh, they're just not grading out really well for me. Either site, either. And same sort of situation for the Red Sox, although they're grading out a little bit better on DK than they do on FanDuel. Um, are you looking at any of the Red Sox bats? Yeah, I mean... you Betts looks nice, but he's yeah, obviously expensive. He's been insane lately. Um, ben Intendi's been hitting a little bit uh, better lately, if I remember correctly, in terms of his average exit velocity. Had the night off last night, got a nice good, good night's sleep. Did he? Okay. I know he didn't yeah. start. I don't know if he came in at all. Yeah, he, he's hitting a... Oh, well, wait, that's against lefties. Never mind. Um, but, I don't know. He was, like, almost near the, like, bottom in average exit velocity for a couple weeks there to start the season. Okay. And I think he's he's picked it back up a little. Still not where I want him to be. Um, J.D. Martinez, Devers for 3,700 is interesting. Um, Tropiano is not a guy that I'm scared to stack against, and um, like if he's so one of these one of these cheap pitchers is going to be really popular, and you can make a case to stack against any of them. So if it's going to be Tropiano, especially against the Red Sox, and I don't think it will be, um, but if for some reason he's the the cheap pitcher that everyone's liking, then by all means you can target some Red Sox bats against him. Agreed. Um, I don't know. I mean, it would be Betts, Hanley, and J.D. Martinez, and then Devers. But those first three guys are all righty. So, um, man, I don't know if I can talk myself into Tropiano. But. It, it's a weird balance. I like things. I like independently things on both sides of this game yeah. that don't go with, like, the other things that I like. And that's the dumbest thing I've ever said, but I think I've made some sense. No, it, there's a, a case to pretty much, like, stack eight, seven teams on this slate, which is weird for a five-game slate. Like, um, I can make a case to stack against both these teams and both these pitchers. But I, I really do like the Angels stack. And if it's going to be somewhat low-owned, then I'll probably end up with at least a few Angels in my lineup with some of those Brewers. Yeah. So I ran the crunch um, before I started so I can get some lineups in. Uh, Grinky in 45%, Chase Anderson in 25%, Eduardo Rodriguez 20%, mm -hmm. Luke Sims 9%, and then just a couple trickler lineups of Trapiano, Tylon, and, uh, and Harvey. From a stack perspective, it's all Diamondbacks and Brewers at the top half. This is a, this won't be how it like my actual exposures end up, but it's just sort of the guideposts of the direction I'll end up going. And then after that, which I was really surprised by, but I think this would change if Freeman was out. Uh, Braves and Red Sox are the next two stacks that pop up a lot for me. Braves and Red Sox, yeah, um, that makes sense. But probably has a lot to do with Freddie Freeman, um, with the Braves, and then the Red Sox like. Man, they're, they're going to stop getting 10 runs every game, right, at some point? I don't know. Maybe no. Uh, um, I mean, they're, they're, what did I see? The, the headline on ESPN is, like, they're the seventh team in... Let me find it. Well, like, it just seems like every time I look, like, check the scores, since I'm more paying attention to hockey um, in terms of the watching, because the Stanley Cup playoffs are 
awesome and you guys should be watching them every single night if you enjoy sports um but like every single night i check and it's like seven runs eight runs it's, it's nine to one like, yeah so they're the they're the seventh team in the live ball era to finish 15 and two and they outscored the angels 19 to one over a stretch of 18 <laughs> innings. yeah um can't argue with that so last time to have last team to have this good of a start the 03 giants man that was when bonds was hitting like nine slugging 900 yeah <laughs> on base percentage 600 people don't really remember like how preposterous is video, like they were video game numbers yeah yeah, Good so Brewers, Brewers D-backs for me, um, I expect Freeman to come out of there and drop the Braves down. So it looks like Boston would be my my next popular stack, if I had to guess. Okay. So let's check out, uh, let's check DK now. I'm, I'm anxious to see how much Sims comes up here. Um, you can pretty much do whatever you want on DraftKings tonight, once again. So, <laughs> like, I don't think you're really going to need Sims. I'm just, like, making a lineup right now. Yeah, it, it doesn't. That, that was my guess. Also, shout out to Fantasy Cruncher for not having Luke Sims be okay, but Lucas Sims has to be in there. So, just <laughs> get your naming conventions set up better. Yeah, like I'm like I have a lineup right now that I like that I would consider using that has thirty seven hundred dollars left over, and I used Cranky and Tropiano. Yeah, so, I don't. I don't think we're gonna get a ton of Sims here. Yeah. I, I wonder when DK is gonna start getting tighter pricing. I don't know if they're just trying to get people interested and in playing like so you can play every single guy that every single name you recognize or what they're trying to do with this pricing, but it's pretty awful. Yeah, it's a very minimal amount of sim. Well, it's, I mean, sort of growing, I guess. 10%, 9%, somewhere in that neighborhood. I mean, there's not even really bats to pay up for. Outside of Trout and Bats, there's Freddie Freeman and Goldschmidt are the only two that, that are 5K or more. Yeah, it looks like if you're doing Sims and Granky, you know, you're getting a lot of Diamondbacks, you know, with Goldschmidt, Pollock. Yeah. You know, Angels to get, like, Kinsler, Cozart, Trout. That's actually not, I mean, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be uh, playing Real Muto, but Sims, Granky, Diamondbacks stack, Angels stack is, like, the way to do that if you want Sims. Get all of the, you know, the major right-handed Angels bats. Yeah. yeah. Like they you can pretty much ignore salary if you're not paying up for, for both pitcher spots on DraftKings. So leave leave some money on the table. Um because at least that's a way to be different. Like if you're spending up all your salary, um you're probably not gonna have a lineup that's very different. And if you're playing tournaments, that's what you need to bank a GPP. Yeah, um, you can do Tylon and Grinky and get like a pretty big Brewer stack with a sprinkle of Diamondbacks. That's a direction that I think people might go. Yep. But with Grinky, I mean, if you're starting with Grinky, you can pretty much grab any pitcher you want with him, and be open to, you know, any sort of combination for hitters. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a bit more wide open than I would have expected. Very wide open. That's it. Five games. That's all we got. Yeah. And some breaking news. Yeah, we, we do everything here at yeah. Osmo.com. Um, not really any hockey stuff going on tonight, huh? Two, only two well, games? Yeah, there's two games. I'll still do the, the articles. They might just be a little bit more abbreviated since I don't want to recommend every single player. So we might have two <laughs> stacks and um, three spotlight plays instead of three and four. Um, you know, but... Yeah, it's still hockey. There's still games on. And the good thing about hockey tonight, too, is that the games will end before 10 Eastern or around 10 Eastern. So it's not like MLB where you got to wait up until 1 Eastern if you're on the, the East Coast. 
So. I've never. I haven't seen one Eastern in a long time. No. No. Uh, I guess it would be twelve Eastern, right? Then, yeah. yeah, it'd be it'd be well twelve thirty, one o'clock, depending. Yeah. Either way, but it's just not happening. <laughs> so you can you can play some hockey and get some sleep as well. So who doesn't like sleep and hockey? Yeah. Three <laughs> NBA games tonight. Um, you know we'll have the projections and rankings out. Uh, Slam Dunks didn't make it to article form last night, but they were tweeted out. Um, we'll have all that sort of basketball content, baseball content will be out throughout the day. Uh, if you have any questions on the early games, you know, feel free to to shoot us a tweet or a message in the comment section. You know, happy to give out any thoughts on early games that we're not covering in the video. Yeah. Um, what else do we have to touch on? I think that's probably it. Thursdays are kind of quiet, so just check out all of our stuff. Go to awesomeo.com. Sign up for premium. I highly recommend that because that makes my life better. Yeah. I can't lie. It's a, it's a, it's a steal at the prices, too. It like, is. I mean, you're getting there. a ton of content. Yeah. And Osmo's picks. Or yeah. Like, you know, so that's a guy that you probably want to uh, know what he's doing in, in DFS. He's had a little bit of success. Yeah, from time to time, he does really well. Yeah. So If that time is every single day. <laughs> mm-hmm. All righty, that's all I've got. Uh, follow us on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, at Jakari, at Osimo underscore com. Um, like and subscribe the video. YouTube channel's growing like crazy. We couldn't be happier there. It's, it's really nice to see the MLB views growing on a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, makes us feel like we're doing something right. So thanks to everybody that's been doing that, and uh, best of luck tonight. We'll talk to you guys again in the morning. Good luck.